Minister. Um, I, and this is a question that no matter how many times you ask it of me over the next few me weeks, no matter how many inventive ways you find of asking it, I am not going to uh, say who uh, my preference will be uh, to succeed me. Uh, what I do know is that the SNP is awash with talented individuals. One of the things uh, that I've often reflected on um, is that when a political party, any political party in any country has very dominant individuals, others through no uh, fault of the dominant individual, I should say, uh, and not sometimes for the want of trying, often others become a bit eclipsed there. So what I am looking forward to, and I think the country will enjoy over these next few weeks, is seeing that talent um, and seeing the array of talent. I believe I have led this country closer to independence. I believe we are in the final phase of that journey. I think it will be hard because now we have the dual challenge, the one we always had of convincing a majority, a solid, sustainable majority of the merits of independence, but also secondly, a challenge that is new of finding in the face of Westminster anti-democratic opposition, that democratic route to allowing the will of the Scottish people to be expressed. And I believe that my successor, I firmly believe that my successor, whoever he or she may be, will lead Scotland to independence. And I'll be there cheering him or her on every single step of the way. Team. I'll leave other people to be the judge of my leadership. It's uh, probably a bit invidious beyond saying what I'm proud of. And taking this country uh, ever closer to independence is one of those things. It's a bit invidious for me to, to cast that judgment. No, that issue wasn't the final straw. Look, I'm, I'm long enough in the truth. I've, I've been in politics, as all of you know, for a long, long time. I'm not going to stand here and insult your intelligence and say that I live in a world uh, that is divorced from the realities of what is going on around me. Um, but it's not the case that this decision is because of short-term issues. I've faced more short-term issues from time to time over my years in politics than I, I care to remember. Um, and if it was just that, I, I wouldn't be standing here today. What I would say, though, is this, and I, I did allude to this in my remarks. I suppose when I look at some of the issues that are being hotly debated in Scotland right now, one of the things that I do regret, I suppose, is not being able to bring a, a more a rational approach to these debates. And I think that goes back to some of what I said earlier. These debates, some of them, one in particular right now, is obviously controversial in its own right. But I think layered on to the top of that, there has been people's views about me, about independence, and, and suddenly debates that should be uh, rational and that we should be capable as a country of having rationally uh, become something very different. Um, I will always be a voice for inclusion, for quality, equality, for human rights uh, and dignity. Um, I have been, am and will always be a feminist. I will fight for women's rights and I will stand up against threats to women's rights uh, every uh, day that I have breath in my body. Uh, but I'll also stand up for any stigmatised, discriminated against, marginalised and vulnerable group in society. And I believe and call me, you know, an optimist. Not many people call me an optimist, but I am at heart an optimist. I believe these things can co and must in any progressive, liberal, inclusive society find ways of coexisting. Um, and whatever role I play in politics in the future, uh, I will always seek to do everything I can uh, to turn that into a reality. Colin Mackay. How have you gone from having plenty in the tank three weeks ago to an empty tank today? What is it that's changed over the last few weeks? You've mentioned some things. The only thing you didn't mention is the police inquiry into the party's finances. Yes, look, these things are not uh, the reason I'm standing here today. Uh, these are not factors, nor will my decision today affect these things, uh, and all of these things will, will take their course. I, I said something in my remarks that I appreciate will divide opinion in Scotland. Um, I'm a human being, and every human being every day wrestles with a, a whole load of conflicting emotions. And over the last number of weeks, probably since around the turn of the year, you know, I've been struggling with, with just that. You know, I get up in the morning and I, I tell myself, and usually I convince myself that I've got what it takes to keep going and keep going and keep going. Um, but then 
I realise that that's maybe not as true. And, and you go through a process of just deciding where it is and that decision you're going to fall. And, and that's the decision I've come to today. I could go on for another few months. I don't know, six months, a year maybe. But I know that as time passed, I would have less and less energy to give to the job. And I, I can't do the job on anything other than a 100% basis. The country deserves nothing less than that. So that's the judgment I've come to. If that's my feeling that I'm going to get in a relatively short space of time to where I am today, then I owe it to the country to see it now so that that new leadership can be in place. And as I said, in relation to my party, I, I don't want to stand at a special conference um, what a month or so from now and ask my party to take my judgment, opt for a path, knowing that I have doubts about my ability to see it through as leader. This is a better thing to do today for me, for my party, and I believe for the country too.